Hello everybody, this is Shane Mater, and this video is for all my Gila Monster fans out there. I know you guys have been bugging me about the uh, how to tell the sexes on the Gila Monsters. Um, you're going to just blow your mind at how incredibly simple it is. Um, and, and this is just my own personal uh, discovery or the way I do it. Uh, and so far it's worked for me. I've, I've been... Uh, 19 out of 20 that I've, that I've done this with so far have turned out correct. So that's a pretty good ratio, 19 out of 20. And I mean, that's over a period of uh, a few years. Now, the last time I was able to do it was eh, four years ago uh, before I moved out here to Arizona because obviously I'm not allowed to have Gila monsters in Arizona. So I don't have anything that I can show you to demonstrate with or, you know, as an example. Um, I might be able to find some older pictures. Um, but at the time when I was doing this, I, I didn't, I didn't really know it was going to be accurate. I had to wait until you know the the animals were you know grown up and proved out to be correct. So uh, currently, my Gila monsters are on loan to a couple guys in Florida. Um, I sold the majority of my collection, but I still retained ownership of I think sixteen. I think I have sixteen altogether. Um, and Arizona Fish and Game before I moved out here, uh, they were really nice. Uh, believe it or not. And they said they would let me bring one and give me a permit for it. And then they said, well, we'll let you bring, or we'll let your wife uh, have another one and we'll give her a permit so you can keep two out of your collection. I had 72 at the time. And I said, oh, that's wonderful. I said, well, what happens when they breed? Because that's kind of what I do. And she said, well, then you're in violation. So I'm like, well, I don't want to be in violation. I don't want to just have two Gila monsters I'm staring at for the next 10 years. So. Um, anyway, I left everything in Florida, and they're, they're doing pretty well with the guys uh, that I left them with. Uh, production hasn't been, or breeding hasn't been as great as I thought it was going to be, but still, it, it's good. You know, some Gila monsters are better than no Gila monsters, in my opinion, and I'm sure <laughs> everybody else's opinion. But anyway, here's what I do. Here's the big secret. As soon as they hatch out, like hours after they hatch out, just put them in a, put them in a line with each other, and you can tell the head size difference. I mean. They look, when they're just born, for maybe the first 20 to 24 hours, they are sexually dimorphic. And you can tell, I just discovered it one day when they were hatching out and I had them like all lined up in a bunch of different tubs. And I thought, well, that looks female, male, male, female. And so I figured, all right, well, I'll go ahead and label them with my best guess. And I did the same thing next year and did the same thing a year after that. And as they got older and they were, some of them were still in my possession, then I was able to determine, yeah, I was right. You know, this one is a female. The, these two are males. So it just, the, they look exactly as babies as they would like as four-year-old animals is the best comparison I can make. Um, it, it just, there's no color difference. Uh, you know, people talk about the toenails on males or red feet or red toes. or Oh, that's a load of crap. I mean, uh, we all know that. But I'm telling you, sexual dimorphic, uh, head size is is the way to go. I mean, it just uh, it just when you look at them when you when you when you hatch them out and you look at them, you're gonna go, damn, this is so simple. He was right. So and I don't know on beaded's if it's the same. I I've, I've been able to guess pretty good with beaded's from the beginning anyway. Um, I, I don't know. I just got lucky or whatever. But um, and uh, quite honestly, I haven't tracked the beaded's as much as I did the healers because the beaded's. I mean. You know, those things just breed like corn snakes, so it wasn't that big of a deal, it wasn't really that important. Uh, whereas Gila monsters, as you know, you know, you look at the eggs wrong and it dies at day, you know, 200 or whatever it is, you know, three days before it's supposed to hatch. I actually had that happen to me. Like three days before this thing was supposed to hatch, the egg went bad and like the four others next to it hatched out and this thing was just still in the egg and it was just crushing. I think, I think it was because I looked at it on a Tuesday at four o'clock or whatever it was that killed it. So anyway, those eggs are super touchy, beaded lizard eggs, not so much. So anyway, look at the head size as soon as they hatch out. A lot of you, you know, are going to be buying them from other people, you know, share this tip with them. They might go, ah, you know, he's full of crap or whatever, but at least let them know to give it a try. Just line them up as soon as they hatch out, as soon as they're fully out of the egg. And I mean, don't, don't yank them out of the egg or anything. Let them come out on their own. And then it seems like after that first 24 hours, they just kind of, everything kind of fills out and they all look identical. But for the first 24 hours, you know, some of them are a lot thinner and the other heads are a lot broader. 
and you, you know you know what you're looking for. So anyway, good luck. I hope it all works out for you. Let me know what you think. Let me know if it does work out for you. I'll post this video, leave the comments open. And uh, I know I move my hand around a lot, but I, that just the way I'm, I'm not Italian. I just bad habit, I guess. So anyway, later.